Hey guys, Jessica here, the Furry Family Coach. Today's video, we are talking about how to tell if your dog is depressed. Now, again, this is a video inspired from one of Dr. Karen Becker's blogs, which I will link in the description below. She says that it is actually not super possible to tell if dogs suffer depression the same way humans do, but they do suffer a sort of depression in their own way. So in this video, we're going to talk about that. All right, guys, before we get in this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and look down there at that subscribe button. If it's red, click it and turn it gray. Once that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell and select all notifications so YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video, which you don't want to miss because I post all sorts of new content about canine behavior, training, nutrition, enrichment, feline behavior, enrichment, nutrition, all of that wonderful stuff. And if you are the pet parent, the 2.0 pet parent that I think you are, you definitely want to make sure you are not only subscribed to me here on YouTube, but also that you join me over on Patreon. It's the first link in the description. It's a really crazy thing, but you actually get the content you sign up for over on Patreon. So I hope to see you over there for all new and exclusive content, plus early access to all YouTube content. So according to Dr. Karen Becker, she says that while we don't know for sure if dogs experience depression the same way humans do, we do know that they can have mood and behavior changes. And one of the very first things you wanna do if you are noticing, if you think your dog is a little down in the dumps, or if you're noticing mood and behavior changes, you definitely want to get your dog in to the veterinarian because a lot of times it can be associated with an underlying medical condition. Now that's not always the case. Sometimes it can be just because of changes in routine, changes in things around the home, changes in environment. Maybe a child went away to school or just started school again in the fall. You know, dogs get stressed because dogs really thrive on routine. So when that routine changes, dogs can get really stressed and some dogs are more sensitive than others. And sometimes a dog that you never thought of as sensitive before can become sensitive. You know, I, I recently, and this is not necessarily in the blog post that Dr. Karen Becker wrote, but I was recently listening to the Vital Animal Podcast and it's really interesting that some of the things that we see in dogs and cats, but let's let's stick with dogs in this scenario. When your pet, your dog has a vaccine reaction. So we already know it's it's not something really even to be debated. We know like if we actually use science, we know that we're over vaccinating. We are vaccinating our pets way too much, way too often. There's this thing called duration of immunity. I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but one of the really interesting things is that when a pet has a vaccine reaction, which happens a lot more often than people think, a lot more often than is even reported generally because sometimes vaccine reactions can happen in behavior in how our dog reacts to the world around them. So, and, and, and vaccine reactions can be seen a month even. And in fact, with allergies, we see it's generally about a month after a vaccine that we start seeing these, you know, allergy symptoms rearing their ugly head, right? So it doesn't have to happen that day or the next day, but we can see a change in behavior in our dogs with that, that can be associated to vaccines. So that's one thing that could be happening. And, and I really wanted to, I actually didn't know that I was going to include that in this video until it just popped in my head when I was talking about it. And I'm like, I really need to include this for you guys, because this is so incredibly important. I've talked about titer testing before. I will link that video in, I've actually talked about it a couple of times, so I'll, I'll link the most recent video in the description below. I definitely hope you take the time to check that out. That can really be a huge factor in some of these mood and behavior changes with our dogs, and you may not realize it, but if you take a look back at what happened in our dogs' lives around the time of these behavior changes, a lot of times we can see environmental changes, maybe changes in the home, changes in routine, and vaccinations. So how can we tell if our dog is depressed or feeling not so great, right? Maybe their sleeping routine changes. Maybe they're sleeping a lot more than they normally would. Maybe they are getting into mischief around the house, right? They are 
getting into things that they otherwise you know normally wouldn't be getting into maybe your dog has never chewed on anything in your house and all of a sudden they're tearing the toilet paper off the roll you know that could be due to boredom which can lead to depression and anxiety right so there are lots of different things that we can see as signs that our dog is depressed or bored you know if your dog is alone all day while you're at work yeah, we expect that there's going to be a lot of boredom there. So we need to really amp up our game and provide enrichment for our dog so that they aren't quite so bored. We should be, you know, having a neighbor or a friend or a dog walker, pet sitter come in during the day to let our dogs out, take them for a walk, give them a potty break. Um, if you can't do that, maybe take them to a doggy daycare at least a couple of times a week so that they get time to socialize with other dogs, get their energy out and play. It can really make a huge difference in your dog's life. Sometimes if our dog is feeling depressed or bored, we can see weight changes, especially um, becoming overweight because to cure that boredom or to cure that depression, your dog wants to eat more and they may be begging for more food and there may be multiple people in the house that are giving treats. These things happen. Your dog could be, you know, resistant to the training that they've known in the past and be disobedient um, because they don't want to listen to you. Yeah, they're bored, they're depressed that can happen too. So how do we help our dogs if we have noticed any one or multiples of these things happening with our dogs? So the very first thing, and this is, this can be a little tricky. So as a trainer, I tell this to people all the time, we want to make sure we are rewarding the behavior we want to see, and we do not reward the behavior we don't want to see. So if your dog is acting out, we don't want to reward that. Now we do want to help our dogs and comfort them, especially if they are feeling down and depressed or bored, but we don't want to reward that behavior that we don't want to see in our dogs. So distracting them, redirecting them to something more positive when they are doing something they shouldn't be doing, redirecting them is something that we really need to get good at and practice. And then once we start seeing the behavior we want out of our dogs, reward that. Another thing we need to do is to keep our routine more consistent and in that routine consistency, provide lots of enrichment, daily walks, exercise, you know, puzzles and games, lots of playtime with our dog. That's gonna help so, so much. Now I say this a lot, and Dr. Becker puts it in her blog, so I'm gonna mention it. Feeding a better diet and varying the foods that you feed. So nutritional variety is just as important as feeding fresh whole foods. That is something that can really spice up your dog's life and make them much happier. And then of course there are natural remedies that we can use. I love Animalio. I talk about it all the time. It is the only veterinary grade essential oil line that I know of. There are lots and lots of wonderful essential oils that we can use on our dogs. Uh, the one that I would recommend to any dog at all is the Boost in a Bottle or the Aroma Boost Collection. So if, you, if you're like me, you're probably going to use the Boost in a Bottle. Basically it's the Aroma Boost Collection all together in one bottle. Now you may lose some of the benefits by putting it all together in one bottle, but you know, it is what it is. That's how my lifestyle is right now. If you have the time and the patience and you want to really go all in, do the Aroma Boost Collection. All of this is gonna be linked in the description. There is also a wonderful flower essence called Box Rescue Remedy. I really high, highly recommend it. And if you choose to go the route of CBD, which can be wonderful for many dogs, I recommend CBD Dog Health. Now, I have no affiliation with Animalio or CBD Dog Health or Box Rescue Remedy. Um, I don't even have affiliate links for Animalio or CBD Dog Health, but I'm gonna give you links in the description anyway. Box Rescue Remedy, you can get on Amazon, so I will put my affiliate link down below. If you don't know what affiliate link is, that's okay, no worries. Most people use them. Here's the thing, you don't pay any more, and it helps me to, to continue to provide you guys great content. 
it's a win-win. So that's why we use them. But all of those will be linked in the description. These are wonderful natural remedies. And, and there's so much more. There are just more out there. There are more natural remedies. I, wanna, I don't want to say that's the end-all be-all, but those are going to be my favorite go-tos that I have used and I can recommend. So I will link all of those in the description. And the last thing is Dr. Becker says, give it some time. Do all of these things. Make sure you're providing enrichment. Make sure you're playing with your dog every day. Make sure you keep your routine as much as you can. Go to your veterinarian, discuss your concerns, and then, you know, give your dog time. Because all, you know, when something happens, we all take time to heal, right? Something happened. Something put your dog in this state of mind. And, you know, we might not be, we might never know what it was because our dogs can't verbally communicate with us. They don't speak English, right? And we don't speak dog. Now we try our best to learn our dog's body language, but we still can't verbally communicate. So we may never know what actually happened that put your dog in this depressed state, but we do know that we need to give it time and just support our dog as much as possible. So again, Dr. Becker's article will be linked in the description. I do hope this video helped you. I hope you give it a thumbs up and you smash that subscribe button. If it's red, make sure you click it and turn it gray. Once that happens, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Also make sure you are following me on Patreon. It's the very first link in the description. Again, Patreon is this wonderful place where you get the content you sign up for. I have four different tiers to choose from, so you can choose the one that works best for you. You're gonna get all new and exclusive content plus early access to all YouTube content. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I cannot wait to see you in our next video. Until then, bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.